Time for another day of All About The Bass videos. My good friend Nathan here has joined us for another set of All About The Bass. And uh, how have you been? Yeah, not bad, thanks Lee. I'm alright. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty busy. Not much happening on the gigging front? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, Saturday, just gone, I was doing um, uh, the uh, North Sea Jazz Festival. Uh, I was in Holland, Rotterdam. And then, awesome. um, yeah. who with? Uh, level 42. Nice. <laughs> Clang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you bought it up. <laughs> and then uh, I flew back on the Sunday and then uh, had a gig with the Blockheads. Oh, clang. I said, over the, uh, yes, which was very nice. And uh, now it's uh, Monday and here we are. And here we are. Bleary Back down to earth. Yes. It's gone um, from playing to 11,000 fans at a huge, you know, jazz festival yeah. to sitting in a stinky room uh, with me and Danish Pete. <laughs> <laughs> what a come down sorry about that mate it's alright anyway right. what have we got to play with today ok well we're looking at this uh, new line of orange uh, amps this is pretty cool isn't it the OB300 uh, and the OB500 you missed a one out <laughs> yes help me help me Obi help me help me one um, help me Obi one can help me you're my only help so yes Orange, uh, fantastic uh, British amp company, uh, everything designed in, in the wonderful UK. Uh, most of this stuff I think is uh, aiming at the, the lower sort of price end, low to medium price end. So it's built uh, in the Far East somewhere. Um, but we've got two rack heads and um, a totally barbaric or something, uh, technical name, isobaric. Isobarbaric. Oh yeah. Um, this is this has a very cool design. We'll talk about this, I guess, yes, in, in a bit later. I think we should. It's, it's very interesting. Mm. Mm. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So there's no real difference between the OB1500 and the 300, other than the uh, power section. So kind of everything we're saying about the 500 applies to the 300, um, and there's about a hundred pound price difference between the two. So this is really kind of old school and. Old school and new school, kind of in the same thing. A fusion. A fusion. Of yes. Schools. A fusion of schools. Um, taken really from the the sort of the popularity over the years. Well, I say popularity. The sort of niche popularity over the years of bass players driving um, bass amps and guitar amps simultaneously, um, and perhaps getting you know more traditional guitar style overdrive sections out of it. Um, well, and certainly bass players these days just wanting more, different sounds, you know, uh, more varied tones out of their amps. 
you know, I think bass players are just a bit bored with the one sound, <laughs> which yeah. is fair enough. But they, they and also styles of music have changed a lot these for days, sure. Aren't they? For sure. I mean, you know, bands. Well, I don't know. I suppose you know, you've, have, has there? But back in the day, was there? I mean, certainly nowadays, you've got guys like you know. I'm thinking Royal Blood is is obviously the obvious one. Mm. But you know, lots of of bands where there's a much more driven kind of bass line than maybe. But I don't know. Back in the day, were, were bass players really? I know, like the Stranglers would have a little bit of kind of dirt on their sort of. Yeah, bass well, uh, Motorhead, obviously Lemmy. You know, that was that was his thing, wasn't it? Of course. So, um, but these are also very old school. So that this is all analog signal path going through the whole thing. There's no sort of class D power section here. These are class AB power sections, which means there's a little bit of weight behind the amplifier, not you know, uh, not trying to be one of these super lightweight mini heads or anything. But of course, you know, giving you that sort of depth of richness of uh, of, of sort of power and tone that you know the, the class AB amps tend to have. Brilliant panel design it's the it's the sort of now legendary kind of uh, orange picks only design so none of the knobs tell you what they do there's just a picture above it to tell you what they do <laughs> i like it I've yeah to say. i've not too. seen that before me too especially cool foot switch i love it um so <laughs> that's a word switch switch yeah that's like, true yeah, With they couldn't help it so they couldn't uh, help and themselves. uh and a cobra's head cobra's head um, what is this like a horizontal flying spaceship yeah uh various musical symbols which if you're you know, if you know what the theory is, you'll know what they mean. If you don't, you're basically it's a bit elitist, massive. isn't it? It's it is a bit, quite elitist. frankly. Moon and X food blender, yeah. and uh, a, a, another snake that's, that's just been Pete. shot that's with an Pete arrow. Pete running his finger over some sort of sharp blade. It looks like. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> so basic uh, clean volume here with three band active EQ uh, up to fifteen dB cut and boost for either the bass or the middle control, and up to twenty dB cut and boost for the treble control. Well, wow, that's a lot of DB. And uh, it also comes with this really rugged uh, single foot switch uh, designed to switch the, the drive section off. Okay. Um, foot switch included. So yeah, the, 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 this control is how much gain do you want, and then this control is uh, how do you want to blend that with your basic uh, clean bass sound. Mm. Uh, just a straightforward active passive switch on the input. Yeah, no, no gain. Interestingly, that's why I no I input noticed gain. No input gain. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess it's a preset input gain. Right. Uh, balanced DI output on the back. Uh, regular line output. Ground lift. Couple of speaker outputs. We'll show you the back panel of the amplifier. And of course, rack mountable. So you know, back to the you know the, the, the old the good old days or the old days of, of you know you buy a little flight case to put this in or a, a gig bag to go over your shoulder. Mm. Um, I like it. Uh, I think it looks very cool. It's super, super cool, isn't it? Tell them about the, the cabinet, because I think that's, uh, I'm, I, I think this is a very clever design. What, hyperbaric, was it? Or, isobaric. Hi, oh, isobaric. What's hyperbaric. hyperbaric? Hyperbaric chambers, I think, it's, if you've got the bends, you have to go into that. You do, you? absolutely. The decompression. Yeah, absolutely. It's not that. So it's not, It's not. Uh, what do you call it? <coughs> Hyper, hyperbaric. Hyperbaric, or barbaric. No. Or, um, <laughs> it's what's called Barbara it? Iso, isobaric. Isobaric, yeah. Uh, so the idea with this is um, that you have, it's a 212 cabinet, but in a very, you think, well, how can you get 212s in here? Well, uh, it's because there is one behind the other, believe it or not. And so this cab is divided up into two parts, and that is literally what it is. It's, it's, it's just two 12-inch uh, drivers, one mounted behind the other one. And the one at the back is ported here, and I guess that's going to give you your, your bottom end side of things. And then all the focus is going to come out of this front one, and uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive sound, I think. Yeah, it's it's we. Funnily enough, although the video was supposed to be about these amplifiers, we spent probably more time chatting about the uh, the bass cab, which is so you get the the advantages of of loading a cabinet in this sort of isobaric design is obviously the cabinet ends up being much smaller than a mm. traditional two twelve. Um, it uses Eminence near dimmium magnet bass speakers so they're, they're, they're relatively light it's 25 kilos this so it wouldn't say it's super light but it's you know it's probably a little bit lighter than a traditional 212. Um, of course I guess the argument is is you know does it sound as fat and big as a, a traditional 212 cabinet and, it, and it's always hard to tell perhaps in this little room but it you know it's got the power handling advantage of having two speakers so it'll handle up to 600 watts mm. um, and 
You really like you 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 were saying you thought the bass end was good, tight sounding good. Yes, yeah, certainly lots of bottom end. Bearing in mind that we've got it off the floor as well. Yeah, you know, it's, it's set up on this sort of flying case top here. So. Yeah. So you're um, hearing, by the way, a mix of this um, Beta Fifty Two or Beta Fifty Six. Can't remember what it is now. Beta, Beta Fifty Two, I think, yeah. is a microphone and the DI output from the from the back. So let's get into it. Let's just get you some basic. Sounds, I'll show you what the EQ can do. So we're not using the drive section now, just the regular um, clean section. Okay, so you want me to play a bit? You're gonna have a Yes, fiddle? please. We'll Play do that. Marvellous. Playing and fiddling, as we uh, specialise in on All About The Bass. Just a combination of the two humbucking pickups. Yeah, it's our old friend, the Fender Dimension bass, uh, and just both pickups on, everything flat, EQ-wise, and just cool. full out. Yeah. Full out. Uh, so yeah, you got an idea. There's no um, high-frequency driver in the cabinet, so what we're hearing in the room perhaps hasn't got the kind of the spit at the top end that you might get if you used a cab with a tweeter, but I'm guessing as we're using... Um, a mix of the DI output as well, you're probably hearing a slightly more sort of trebly tone mm. than we are. So let's get over to the gain sound, um, and I'll start with the gain, we'll start with the blend halfway and the gain all the way off, and so we hit this nice chunky feeling foot switch on the floor, yeah. and then I'll start to wind in the gain. It gets quite a bit louder as the gain comes in, so might be sort of compensating for that as we go up. But anyway, let's uh, start. Uh, with the gain all the way down, so you, it's just it might just add a little bit, a little bit of um, you know, like, like, well, like when you get a cappuccino and they say, do you want some cocoa powder on the top? And you go, yeah, a little bit of that. It's, that's the that's my <laughs> analogy of how much gain is. It's just it's like a cocoa powder on a cappuccino amount of gain. A sprinkling. <laughs> all right, that was the word. It's a sprinkling. <laughs> Clean, yeah. and it gets funky immediately. I, I like the way that, that using the blend control, you can really hear how you can go from essentially a sound that's an entirely a, ba a traditional bass amp sound with it like a sprinkling of gain on it, mm. through to a sound that's that, like you've got two amps, so you mm. can still hear the bass amp and you can still hear the driven kind of guitar y kind of amp, through to only hearing the really driven tone. So, I have to say that the overdrive in that. It's really nice, yeah. You know, because we've done reviews on the pedals and stuff before, and you turn them on, you go, oh, yeah, I can't. That's, all the all the bottom end goes out of it, and it's just nasty. Yeah, but that's kind of I like that. Yeah, we that's definitely right. have. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's most of the the overdrive pedals demos that we've had. The difficulty has been that they're not pedals that you just turn on and instantly everything sounds better. You've really got to try and work at it to try and find that sweet spot on the pedal. Yeah. Whereas this seems to be. Um, more instantly kind of usable. Um, now, 
you guys will be glad to know as well that what we've tried to do to try and sort of keep this sort of in context of sort of you know what kind of bass players are using um, amps with ga uh, gain uh, as well as amps you know sort of traditional bass amps so we've got ourselves on the floor um, an octave pedal a quint octave pedal uh, which, by T Rex yeah which, which actually uh, can be used for bass or guitar um, and has uh, three uh, pitch shift options in it of which we are only using two. So you, actually the, the quint will do octave above, octave below, uh, and a fifth. But we're not using the fifth above. Um, we're just using the two octaves. And um, we're, we're, we're trying to simulate um, kind of a, a royal blood sort of thing. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not going to be playing a royal blood track, but just to kind of give you the idea of what they do. Yeah, we're not using pogs. We're not using big floorboards or anything like that. We're trying to keep it sort of, this isn't like a sound like royal blood. A demo, although they haven't could been. be. Yes, in fact, if you want to sound like Royal Blood, I know Rabir and Matt have done one. I'll put a link in the description below. Yeah, they've done a sound like Royal Blood. Into it, not using uh, this amp though. I forget which amp they were using. Okay. Anyway, whatever. Uh, weren't they using a guitar rather than a? They were using a guitar and, um, and a bass. No, but they were using a guitar, not a bass. They were they? using the Gretsch bass that he's got. Right. The cheap one. Okay, fine. So I don't know if you just heard that or not from behind the camera, but anyway. So go and check the uh, go and check that out if you want. Uh, so yeah, let, let's let's uh, do, now. Do you need me to be punching in foot switches for you, or can you do it yourself? I didn't know if you need anything simultaneously switched on. Oh, I'm just gonna turn it on. Okay. That's it. Let's just do this thing. <laughs> I'm not messing so, about. So where did we need to get? Like, put the put the quint on and quint on here. quint what, what, on, but with no drive yet. So right. that's a bit of that. So that's giving us an octave, the, the straight signal, an octave above and an octave down. Yeah. Okay. And if we blend in, just say, everything at say nine o'clock, so it's just a little kind of hair. Yeah. yeah. Just what I was trying to adjust on the floor there was a little bit less of the octave below and a little bit more of the dry signal and a little bit more of the octave above. Okay. Uh, and I guess the way I kind of hear that Royal Blood tone or, or the, that type of tone is so it, it sounds like you've it sounds like you've got a guitar and a bass kind of playing along together, but mm. uh, you know obviously playing all the same notes. Uh, let's let's go on a bit. Let's go up a bit more with the gain. More gain. Yeah, but I won't. Can't I won't you take it? Blend any Captain. more in. Let's just... I really like that, like as much as I've heard. Uh, I mean, I hope this is coming across to you. It sounds like, well, I, in, to my ears anyway, it sounds like a mix of two guitar amps. You know, or two, you know, a bass amp and a guitar amp. It works. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's not your bag? I'm not listening. I'm, I'm trying to play the bass. <laughs> I'm busy. Put, put it on the back humbucker. Put it on the back humbucker. Get a bit more, um, just keep playing.
whizzed over to the, the OB-1 300, not going to go through the sounds, we're almost doing this more for ourselves just to try and give you some sort of constructive uh, volume difference because um, you know 300 to 500 is not a massive volume difference really is it I think I've let's just well, I don't know let's find, let's find out. out have a quick play All do right. that dirty funky thing that you were doing at the beginning I liked it alright on the days yeah ha quite um quite hard to really say i mean I, I, well obviously know. this is going to be louder i know i'm just i'm just wondering <laughs> i mean certainly 300 watts particularly with the sort of the gainy side of this is definitely giggable uh the 500 sounded like it just had more bass end to me rather than i think the 300 maybe just just sounded a tiny bit more honky mm. and i wonder if that's because i you know all you um wattage expertise over there will know that the difference between 300 and 500 isn't terribly much in terms of volume but what it does give the the, the amp is a little bit more room to breathe when you're driving the bass end heavier which i think is that's all i really heard to be honest with you it's just it sounds fatter the 500. um i mean i know you know one's a little bit cheaper than the other one uh but i think i would be inclined to say you know if you can find the extra 100 quid to go up to the 500 that's the one I would suggest. Well, you well always, yeah, because you know you need as much headroom as you, you can yeah. have, really. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but both perfectly doable if you can only afford the smaller one. So, happy days. Onwards. Yeah. You may or may not have just heard the fan in the amplifier briefly kick on, oh. uh, and now it's switched itself off again. So that means it's got like a thermostatically controlled fan in there. So another feature I really like is this lovely flickering lamp. And you had a yeah what? yeah I mean that's it's so analog in here basically that the the the, the flickering is because it's an actual flame in there you know when is you it? switch it on there it's it, it's quite clever what happens is is as the switch goes like that it runs a matchstick over a piece of you know, sandpaper and then you get the flickering kind of light and then you switch it off it it, it uh, mutes it back down and puts it in a little does it so there's a little tray at the bottom you have or to it, empty or out it, of or it could just be a cheap matches. it could just be a cheap LED. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like it, it could be a feature. I don't know. I like it. A lot of people pay, uh, you know, people pay a lot of money for those kind of, uh, uh, you know, ele electric fire effect. Well, there you go. <laughs> As a bonus. <laughs> Throw um, in. Right. I know what you're all saying. You're saying what we really want to hear is Nathan playing along to a cheap drum machine whilst uh, Lee tries to play the drums. So, hey. <laughs>
just in case you see uh, some clips of Nathan playing this, this is uh, we uh, Orange sent us this down and said, "Oh, if you're doing a video on our bass amps, can you tell people about this guitar?" So I thought, why not? This is called the Orange O bass. It's available in uh, black or sunburst with the cream binding, um, or obviously what you really, really want to buy, and I'm kind of, it's a shame they didn't send us this one. You buy it in orange to go with your orange oh, rig. Oh, yes. Comes with a gig bag, comes with two scratch plates, which I've never seen done before, so you can sort of mod your base to decide how you want it to look. Like that. Uh, and they're both around about the 260, 270 kind of money. Uh, so it's, you know, sort of affordable kind of base, but with a, it reminds me of like the sort of Hofner violin-y kind of outline. Uh, you know, old school, old fashioned. It, yeah, it's got that. Like, it's got that kind of sound to it. It's got the kind of um, yeah. slightly plummy sort of. Um... Not much to tell you about this P bass pickups. Um, you know, strung through the bridge style uh, bridge rather than through the body. A passive EQ volume tone. Mm. Four string only available. Bound neck. Anyway, yeah, you'll hear it. A nice. Yeah, it's got an interesting look. I think. Yeah, cool vibe. Yeah, cool very vibe. cool. Orange is the one, I think. Orange is the cool one. We'll, I'll put some up on, in fact, whilst we're talking, some pictures of them will float across your screen delicately, just like the moth that landed on Cristiano Ronaldo's face during the uh, 2016 Euro Cup final. <laughs> so that just about wraps up this uh, review of the orange amps and cabs <clears throat> and the bass. Uh, very nice. I think we like these, don't we? We do. Nothing wrong with a bit of old school tech uh, and a dirty fuzz tone to get you going in the morning. I'm on the turn. I kind of like it. I'm getting into the fuzz tone. Yeah, you yeah. see. Yeah. And this does, just... this does it very well. Yes, it does. I can see Frost's next album. It's all going to be the entire band, apart from the drummer, is going to get the sack, aren't they? It's going to be you <laughs> singing 17 orange things, five part harmonies. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Who knows? Royal Frosty Blood. Yeah. Royal, I mean, Royal Frost. It's not my band, so that would be interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? Me trying to sack the bloke whose band it is. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Right. Anyway, uh, fantastic. Uh, I've been Nathan. I've been the captain. See you next time. Bye. Bye.